Hello, welcome to using JEdit to create a Python program on Windows XP. So this assumes that you've got Python installed and your path is set correctly in the command line um, and that you have JEdit installed. So you need to consult the documentation for getting those installed properly um, and this is just a quick review of how to write programs um, and get them running, assuming everything's working already. So we're going to start by saying uh, we're going to run JEdit, start all programs, JEdit, and run it. And so here I have JEdit, and I'll write a simple program. I'll say um, print hello first program. And now I'm going to say file, save as. And I'm going to go into my home directory, and I'll press this little home button. And um, I'm going to go. I mean, I'm as administrator. I'm going to go uh, to my desktop, and that desktop now, C Documents Administrator. Let me move this over a little bit. C Documents Administrator Desktop. That is this desktop that I've got going right here. The administrator right here should be whoever you are, but you want to be in your desktop. And I'm going to make a new folder. So I'm going to click on this new folder icon. And I'm going to call this uh, SI100 because this is a class I'm taking. And then in uh, SI100, I'm going to make yet another folder underneath that. And I'm going to call it um, Assignment01. Now, I suggest that you put no spaces in your file names because otherwise things get complicated. And I'm going to go into the Assignment01 directory. And so now I'm in on my desktop, SI100, Assignment01. And that would be here. And then in assignment 01, I'm now in assignment 01. I'll watch this here as I save it. You'll see the file pop right up. And I'm going to call this program first.py. So lo and behold, here we go. Now it turns out that because I named it with a .py on the end, I can click it and it opens, but it just runs and doesn't stop, which is, I wish they would change that, which because then you could just click it to open it. It would really be so cool to do that. So I'm going to say, uh, instead, I'm going to run the command prompt. And it's already here in my shortcut, but I'm going to say um, run, and then I'm going to say CMD for command. Now, I am in my desktop. I, I mean, I'm, I'm in my home directory, so I've got to go into my desktop. And then I'm in the desktop, so now I can do a dir to see what I've got. And lo and behold, there I've got SI100. I can change into the SI100 directory. And I can do a dir there. And then I can change into the assignment01 directory. Now, it's always telling you right here where you're at. I'm in the C drive, document settings, administrator, desktop, SI100, assignment01. So if I do a dir, lo and behold, first.py is right there. And away we go. Now I just run it by saying python first.py. That just says read that file. Uh, dear Python, read that file, first.py, and run the, run the program that's in there. And away we go. So I want to make a change to that file. Um, so I'll just say uh, print um, a second line. Oops. And then I'll say File Save, and this time I'll just hit the pencil icon to save it. And there it is updated. And I can do uh, dir. And it's still there, and I type Python first.py. And there we go. So now I'm going to uh, close this file, and I'm going to start working on my second assignment. So I'll, I've got it, I'll create a new file. And I'm going to say print, this is my second assignment. And I'm going to say file, save as. And I don't want to be in assignment 01. I'm going to go back up to SI100. And I'm going to make a new folder. And now I'm going to call this one ASSN02. And I'm going to go into assignment 02. And I'm going to call this called second.py. So now if I go over here in my finder, 
I can go up one, and now I'm in SI100, and I can go into assignment two, and there's second.py. Now I'll go into my window system. There's a couple ways to get there. One way is if I know where I'm at and I want to go up one, I say cd dot dot, and now if I do a dir, we'll see assignment 02, and then go down, back down into cd assignment 02. So I went up, and now I'm back down. If I do a dir, there's second dot py, and I can run python second py, and there we go. Now, another thing is if you get completely uh, lost, then you just close this window, pow, and then you start another one. And you are back in your main directory, and you say CD desktop. And I just, let me show you do that in slow motion. I said CD DES tab, and it knew the desktop was unique, so it finished it for me. And then I do a dir, and I'm in, I see SI100 folder, CD SI100, dir, Assignment 1 and Assignment 2, CD Assignment 02, and I do a dir, and there's second.py, okay? And again, I can run it, of course, by saying Python second.py. Now, I'm going to make this file, uh, this Python program, actually read a file. So I'm going to create a new file. I might have to download this, but if you're going to be reading files in your Python programs, you have to put them in the same directory. So this is uh, going to be a simple text file with a few lines in it. And I'm going to say file save as. I'm going to make sure <clears throat> I am in the same directory as my second programming assignment. Oop, I named it untitled. That's pretty dumb. So I'm going to instead say file save as and I am going to name it um, funData.txt and I'm going to drag this untitled into my trash which, see, I do not want untitled folks I'm even going to go over here to, okay it's gone Ooh, I made a typo, so I'll fix that and save it with the pencil icon so if I am here and I look, I'm in assignment 02, I do a dir to see what the files are, and there's fundata.txt and second.py. Now I'm going to change that program, second.py, and I'm going to say um, file handle is equal to open fundata.txt. So here's something just to show you. So the suffix can get people confused. Okay, So if I do a dir here, I see the real real true file name. Fundata.txt is the real real file name. And fundata.txt is the real file name in my open statement. But if I come over here, look, I don't see that that's fundata.txt. It's, it's trying to keep me from being confused by hiding that .txt and telling me it's a text document. The same with a .py these operating systems look at the suffix and, and, and tell you what they're, it thinks they're in the files, but then it hides the suffixes. There's actually a trick to make it show the suffixes. I'll show you that trick in a second. But just don't be confused when you don't see the suffixes here. That's why it's always good to be in here and you see the suffixes, fundata.txt. And um, so let me finish my program. I'm opening fundata.txt, read, and then I'm going to print len of the file handle dot read that says read the entire program that says take the file read it all the way into a string and then what is the length of that string so that'll print out the number of characters if I got my Python right so I say save and I run python second dot py and it counted and there's 63 characters in that file now, um, here's an interesting thing. I can hit up arrow, and it immediately knows my previous commands. I can hit up arrow a couple times and go back several commands. So that's a, a speedy thing. Okay? So that's the basic idea. Um, it, you know, the, the biggest thing is getting things in the right directory, knowing what the names are, and, uh, not, and, uh, and keeping track of what's going on. Um, so let me show you just this is kind of advanced how you would see the suffixes on files.
It might take me a second to find this. Tools, folder options. See this thing says hide extensions for known file types? It's like, thank you very much, no. And so I'll turn that on for this folder so I will actually see the suffixes now. And so you saw immediately, it now shows me the suffixes to the file. And again, that's under Tools, Folder Options, View, Hide Extensions. Okay? You don't have to do that, but for me, it makes things a little more sane. Okay? Thanks.